Hello, uh, I'm Kevin Norton, and I'm here to talk about my September 22nd, uh, 2016 concert at Roulette in the Interpretation Series. The name of the piece is uh, Staten Island, semicolon, all that is solid melts into air. And it's with my band, Breakfast of Champignon, which includes uh, Angelica Sanchez on piano, Esther No on violin, Julia Simonello on electric guitar and vocals, and Steve Laspina on bass, and myself, uh, Kevin Norton, on drums, vibraphone, marimba, percussion. So this piece, uh, about Staten Island is uh, sort of a personal memory of growing up there, then going away, and then uh, coming back, uh, meeting some uh, new people in Staten Island that I uh, never knew. It was sort of based on a trip. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, me and a couple of friends tried to circumvent the island we didn't make it, but we met some very interesting people along the way. And I had wondered if some other people had done that. And so, yeah, I went back there and uh, started to meet uh, some new people. Uh, and in fact, one of those people, Julia Simonello, is now a member of the band. She's a singer and a guitar player and I heard her play with her band uh, called Yeti with her uh, girlfriend, uh, Jenna Snyder. And uh, I liked the freshness and the directness and the honesty of the music. And so I have a young person who comes from a background of rock music but I also have Esther No, who's an incredible classical violinist, Steve Laspina, who's an amazing a jazz bass player, Angelica Sanchez, who is a composer in her own right, and a, a piano player who's put out many CDs on her own. And so the, all these various things put together makes for a very interesting, I think, and organic band. And it's sort of based on a central thing, and it's also one of my first expanded compositions in a while. In the past, I had written pieces for Guy Debord, which is an hour long suite. Uh, uh, Kathy Change, a, a piece about Kathy Change. Uh, uh, a sort of uh, clarinet concerto for David Krakauer called Three Movements for Clarinet and Ensemble. Pieces like that. And uh, I had then moved uh, to pieces, uh, shorter pieces, for instance, for my uh, quartet called the Bauhaus Quartet, which included uh, Tony Malaby on tenor, tenor and soprano saxophone, Dave Ballou on trumpet, John Lindbergh on bass and myself on percussion instruments. And in fact, for that band, I wrote a, a sort of a piano concerto for Angelica Sanchez, and that's how I, uh, Angelica eventually moved into the band, and the band morphed into Breakfast of Champignon. This piece, we're doing this uh, interview in June, but by September, it's going to be a multiple uh, movement piece. Again, uh, some songs with lyrics, uh, uh, some without. Um, but there's a movement, for instance, that's just a violin and vibraphone duet. There's a piece that's just for piano and voice. There's a piece that's just for drums and bass, etc. And so all these. Um, sort of orchestral uh, combinations. Um, there are various reasons for them. Uh, it has to do with the people that I'm writing for, and it's also inspired by people that I've been working with recently, most notably uh, Scott Robinson, 
John Lindbergh, uh, Connie Crothers, uh, Angelica Sanchez, but also the, the people uh, in, the, in the band, again, Esther, Angelica, Julia, and Steve. Uh, and so there are these various uh, combinations. And so the arc of the entire piece maybe eight movements, maybe 10 movements. We'll, we'll see when, when it's all finished. But hopefully the, the feeling is that it moves, uh, it's never, uh, it never has this static quality that the orchestration, the instrumental coloration is constantly changing. The, the tempos are changing who's improvising, who isn't improvising, what's completely notated, is all like in a state of flux throughout the piece. One of the pieces in this suite is called uh, Notes Forward Looking Tradition. And there's actually a recording of that with the Bauhaus Quartet. And the reason why I wrote the piece was, you know, people started to know my work with Fred Frith or Anthony Braxton, uh, a little bit with John Zorn, with uh, the Microscopic Septet, Philip Johnston. Um, but they, I noticed that they sort of forgot, or I'm not exactly sure how to put it, uh, about my work with Milt Hinton, which was uh, very, very important uh, for me when I, uh, was growing up in Staten Island, I part of me thought this is like a really backwards place and I can't wait to get out of here. And so I met Milt Hinton and I took his class at Hunter College, the jazz workshop at Hunter College, and it, it opened up an entire world for me. And um, at, at one point I asked him, hey Milt, like, what are your favorite records that you made? And I sort of expected him to talk about like a Louis Armstrong record. He played with the Louis Armstrong All-Stars for many, many years. He mentioned these records that he made with George Russell. And so I, I said, oh, okay, that, well, that's interesting. Why those records? And he said, because George Russell for him uh, was a, a very important guy because he respected the, the jazz tradition, but he really wanted to move forward from that. And, and for Milt, that it was like a very important thing. And, and in fact, being in Milt's basement, he, uh, he played me this reel-to-reel -reel tape of a piece that he wrote for Barry Galbraith and himself that was never released. Uh, and he was very proud of this piece. And uh, that always uh, stuck with me and it meant a lot to me. And so that's the reason why I wrote the piece, uh, Milt's Forward Looking Tradition, in which the bass has the melody. The music is, is both about, um, you know, uh, technical stuff, uh, rhythms, pitches, counterpoint, but it's also about feelings. And it's also, uh, and those feelings are, are not necessary, not necessarily just the, the, the feeling of, you know, bluesy feeling or a jazzy feeling or sad feeling. It, it, they're, they're deeper feelings. And uh, I, uh, I owe a lot to um, Mill Tinton and, and the worlds that he introduced me to on all the, the history that he uh, told me about.